Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today we are talking about lighting. This is probably one of the most argued topics in the aquarium <laughs> realm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I get questions about this all the time. Like, what light should I use? Why are they so expensive? Why do, we, why do I need this one versus that one? Can I just use my old light from 10 years ago? It's a confusing topic to get into. Uh, yeah, and I had to do research for this video because it's been talked about before. I'm not very techy. It's just not what I'm into here. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, man, there are a lot of opinions out there. <laughs> and trying to be like, uh, who do I give weight to here? It was getting, it was really unnerving for me to like try and get into the science of why lights work the way they do, and mm -hmm. how does it affect where. So, of course, as always, I had to go back to science. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I made, I don't have an assortment of colors here, so <laughs> I had to make do with what I got. So these are four different light spectrums, and when you're on this end, you are in the blue and purple end of the spectrum, and then I tried to shift over approximately when the yellow light spectrum So this hit. is specifically talking about the color of light. Yes. Or how our eye perceives that color, or how the organism absorbs that color. Yes. Right? Okay. Exactly. So, uh, I'm not going to get into the whole, is light a particle or a wave thing, so let's, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> move on before we even start. <laughs> um, so one thing to keep in mind with light is that wavelengths affect how we perceive color. So higher intensity light, which would be blues and purples, they have very short wavelengths. Mm -hmm. So that means in like a second, you're theoretically getting bombarded with more waves, thus more energy. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I thought it might be fun. Do you have any guesses for what any of these light spectrums perceive? I, I'll give you a hint by telling you what these different peaks mean. Okay. So this is approximately purple and blue peaks. Uh, this is around like green, around here would be yellow, and then this is red light spectrum. So I did try to shift the right. blue to green when it would shift from cool to warm colors. So both of these two look like they would be uh, marine underwater light. Oh, so does this... No, I have no idea. No, I don't get the question, so you're going to have to explain it better. You are More. way closer than you think you are. Okay. okay. <laughs> so this is... Daylight. This is three, uh, six feet underwater. Six feet. Mm. Got it. Okay. And this is 36 feet underwater. Okay. Okay. This is a reef aquarium. And then this is a standard output T5 office fluorescent. Uh, <laughs> so whatever you'd pick up that at the local lot, hardware store. That looks a lot bluer than I would expect. Um, yes, but I will explain that as I get to it. <laughs> <laughs> so would that be a cool white? Yes. Okay. So, but the thing that's really important to keep in mind here is that for red light, the difference between this and this is insane. 20% of red light is filtered out. No, 30%, sorry, 30% in the first two feet of water. Two wow. Feet. <laughs> so the difference between here and here, I know these peaks don't look large, but these are approximately to scale. That's a big deal on the red light spectrum. Right. Right. So when you're looking at this versus this, you'll notice that there's a lot less red light. That's because in reef aquariums, we're trying to get our corals to fluoresce and they don't right. really use that much red light anyways. So they're gonna use a little bit, uh -huh. but not a lot. So you're not going to hurt your corals by doing that. You're actually just kind of, you know, appreciate them in the way you want to appreciate them. <laughs> yeah. So that's okay. But you'll see that these peaks are more or less coalescing in those same regions that they would be between each other within the, so this would roughly be natural habitat. And then this would be artificial attempt at it. Sure. So the difference between here and here, that's a really big 
deal. Definitely. Um, because A, it's way more blue, and it's not even close to the red light spectrum. That is something that I, like, was shocked to learn is how many people were talking about at least high-end, like really crazy aquariums, talking about how they don't have enough red light in their plant tanks because plants will use blue and red light. So if you have both of them, it's really good. I found a lot of people who aren't using white lights at all. Yeah. So in a planted aquarium, most aquatic plants grow shallower than six feet deep, yes. with many of them growing in the one to two foot range where there'd still be red light available. In a reef environment, most of those corals, best coral growth happens at 33 feet. Yep. So they're very not, little red light. Left. Very little <laughs> red light. Right. Uh, that's part of why some of the new controllable lights are so exciting to me because I like the look of a whiter tank. I think that looks prettier most of the time, but what that lets me do is pump in blues or reds and really ramp that up towards the end of the day when I'm really not looking at it that much and still get some of the benefits out of having more of that in there. Right. And that's really interesting in this situation where I'm switching back to plants here mm -hmm. because um, algae is something that we're always combating and the best defense against algae is good plant growth. Absolutely. So if this is what you're lighting your plants with, you are not giving them every resource they need to outcompete algae. Right. Makes total sense. So when you're looking at price tags of plants, I, I begin to come around more to the idea of like price tag of plant lighting, I should specify. Okay. I'm starting to come around more to that. You should not be thinking of it of just in terms of how much you're paying versus how long you're gonna have the light. You should also factor in how much extra work are you gonna do because <laughs> you're gonna to have to be compensating for whatever level light you're paying for. Right? What's your time worth to you? <laughs> yeah. I think it's pretty notable that the uh, expensive Twin Star S-Series light that we just put on our Glosso tank mm -hmm. is growing plants like crazy. And in the, there's no algae in the tank. It's right. more light than I've seen go into a planted tank as far as the output is concerned in a long time. Yeah. But it's not growing any algae. But it does have a lot of reds and blues in it too. Right? Yeah. yeah right. I, I, I even took the time to like, I looked at it from underneath <laughs> because if you look through the filter, you can make out what color the LEDs in it are. Don't try this at home. Yeah, you may no, go no. blind. Yeah. Uh, it's like, Okay, I'm definitely seeing a lot of reds and blues in there, and I saw a couple lights, but it definitely yeah. was not the main component of yeah. that fixture. It's yeah. notable. Yeah. yeah. Not even mentioning the fact that this light, the fluorescent, is going to lose, what is it, 50% of its efficacy over the first six months, something like that. Right. Um, you know, if you're not changing it out constantly, then you're not even getting that. <laughs> no, absolutely true. Absolutely true. Yeah. I think we should touch on one of the, a couple of the, the related terms to what's going on here. And mm -hmm. you, you talked about intensity and you're talking about color. And we regularly get the question in the store, well, I have a really bright light, it's 18,000 K. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we should define what that means. Sure. Yeah. That 18,000 K has nothing to do with the amount of light going in the tank. Color temperature is the standard that we use to determine the color of the light, and it's based on degrees Kelvin. So a daylight is uh, 6,500 K. Yeah. Thereabouts, yeah. Right, which is 6,500 degrees Kelvin. That's the color magnesium is if you burn it or heat it up to 6,500 degrees Kelvin. Okay. It's so funny. The measurement's so far removed from what you're actually looking at that it's, it's so hard to right. understand. It's simply a scale. Yeah. The lower the degree Kelvin, the redder the light, the higher the degree Kelvin, the bluer the light. Yep. Right? With daylight falling somewhere in between. So an 18,000 K light is going to be really blue looking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I don't know enough about the physics of light to really get into the nitty-gritty details but the information that i took this from 
you could roughly translate into K because okay. these would, and this is not the right terminology, but it's what it's gonna make the most sense to me and a lot of people here, is if you were to score these lights, they would add up to a certain K. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I think the challenge you would run into, and this is something, this is where simply knowing the Kelvin rating of an aquarium light isn't enough. Right. Because I would imagine the Kelvin rating on this one and the Kelvin rating on this one are gonna be fairly similar. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But this, you're getting a whole lot more in this range, but nothing here. This, you're getting a whole lot more in this range, but something here. Right. So, lighting is confusing. Yeah. It really is. We should make mention of how terrible human eyes are at determining brightness, because we look at this, and to us, anything that's more white looks brighter. Blue looks darker. So we could have the brightest blue light and we'd still think it looks darker than a dim white light. That's just, our eyes aren't True. built to know how bright things are necessarily, right. just if it can hurt us or not. We see contrast, we don't see bright. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, looking at the color of a light only tells you how well those organisms can use it. It doesn't tell you how bright it is or which plants or corals can be grown in it just by a glance. Sounds like this is a great topic for a podcast because we could go on and on yeah. talking about life. And I think we're going to have to do yeah. that here really That's soon. That's a great idea. Yep. So look for our podcasts wherever you find podcasts, Watercolors Aquarium Gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, come into the store. Let's talk about lighting. Let me know what you think. Did we clarify things or did we make it more confusing? <laughs> what light are you really excited about right now? Because we're always looking for recommendations. Yeah. Let's have lots of fun. Keep those hands wet.